peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The seventy are sent out. By this time in Jesus' ministry, he's got quite a following. There's an entourage that follows him. Uh, he sends out seventy. We think of when we say the Lord's disciples, we think of twelve. But here he sends out 70 of his disciples. There's more than just 12. Quite a few. They are there when he comes to whatever town. He sends them out, this time, to go to the towns where he's heading. Some are just event people. They come out whenever he comes near their town. But there are a lot of roadies. They follow him around. Wherever he goes, from town to town, these are the ones who he sends out. And Jesus sends out his disciples, 35 different teams, two by two, into the towns and villages that he's about to visit. Two by two they go. And they're given great authority for two things. To heal the sick and to proclaim that the kingdom of God is near. His authority to heal the sick served to authenticate his real ministry. He went, he sent them out as advanced campaign workers. They too heal the people just as Jesus would do. This validates Jesus' ministry when he comes and brings healing. They were going to prepare for Jesus to sow the seed of the gospel. To proclaim the kingdom of God is near. It's coming to you, to a town or village near you. When they return, they're full of just great enthusiasm. Lord, they said, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus has a lot to say to them. But the nugget of it is this. Don't be all that excited that demons are subject to you in my name. That you have authority over them. But rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. Wow, that's pretty amazing stuff. To heal and to cast out demons, why wouldn't they be excited? But Jesus says, no, no, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Jesus redirects their excitement from the sensational to the purpose for which he has come. The purpose of salvation. Hey, casting out demons, healing illnesses are window dressing without salvation. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Luke, in the 15th chapter, Jesus reminds us that there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than for the 99 who have not been lost. The main thing is that you keep the main thing, the main thing. That's what Jesus is saying. The main thing is that you keep the main thing, the main thing. Don't put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> the authority that Jesus gave for the 70 to heal the sick was given for another purpose. The purpose was the gospel. The proclamation that your sins are forgiven. Salvation has come. The kingdom of God is coming near to you. In fact, the king himself is about to visit. And we're here to prepare you for his visit. The kingdom of God is about to come to you. And your names will be written in heaven. That's the message they're going out to bring. Jesus came for the purpose of salvation. That people's names would be written in heaven. In the Revelation, that book is called the Lamb's Book of Life. 
For this purpose, Jesus was born, to get sinners into heaven. It's the reason that he came to this earth, to this planet. It's the reason that he lived a life of perfection, for the purpose that your name and my name would be written in heaven. He willingly suffered torture, mocking, and a hideous death. He was determined to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He was determined that your name would not be omitted, but it had to be written in blood, his blood. He gave his life. No one took it from him, he says himself. And he did it with a purpose. That by faith, in the work that Jesus did on the cross, your name would be written in his blood, in his book. And friend, the kingdom of God has come to you. He has written your name in his book because he loved you. And he gave himself for you. Your name has been written because of his work for you. And it happened the moment that by his gift you trusted in his finished work for you. For many of you that was at baptism when you were infants. Some of you came and remember when you didn't believe and came later in life. But it was a miracle when he opened your eyes and he gave you life and wrote your name in his book. It was the proclamation of Christ that brought you to him. Jesus sent someone to you. Mother, father, friend, pastor. Maybe it was Billy Graham. And you believed. Jesus says, pray for laborers. The harvest is plentiful. Look around you. It's white with harvest. Pray for harvesters to go out into the field. It is noteworthy that Jesus told those he had sent with authority to pray for laborers in his field. Let me end this sermon with these words that Jesus said at the end of his ministry. Matthew chapter 28. You know it well. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of this age. The authority of heaven is ours to proclaim his love for us, that Jesus wants their names in his book too. Praise be to Jesus Christ for his work for us. Amen.